there, it's Laura Joy. I am going through this financial literacy course on this free learning site called Khan Academy and I wanted to talk about what I'm learning and do like a little report on it because I think it's important to know these things and stuff so I've done a lot of work on this and I got through two of the course segments. Okay, so the first is saving money for the future because the future is an exciting time. Um, one of, or three of the things that you need to save for for the future are unexpected costs, then you need to save for some uh, living costs, which you want to have three to five times the amount or three to six times the amount of living costs saved up before you get those things. Um, and then um, saving up for things like a car that can be categorized into living costs, but cars and then uh, medical expenses, those are, a, there's a lot of large medical expenses and part of that is paying for like things like pills, things like uh, checkups and uh, extra costs with medicine that insurance doesn't pay for, but you also need to set aside some money for insurance. Uh, each month out of every paycheck, but um, unexpected costs are things like medical, car, and the house bills. So, um, <laughs> you gotta pay yourself first, and one of those things is that if you get paid, Set aside, let's see, you get paid. Um, okay, I don't really want to work with numbers. <laughs> but um, it's, if you've heard of the 50, 30, 20 rule, it would be 50% towards needs, 30% towards wants, and 20% towards savings. So that 20% you can put into a savings account and it can earn interest. But you could also split that in half and save 10% in an account and then 10% in a cash form or something. But I was, if there's like a fire that gets burnt up, you know, so you want to have it in an account usually. Um, paying yourself first is like putting aside that money for yourself. If you get paid $12, but you need food that day, what do you do? Like, um, that's not a lot to work with. I would say set aside like $5 to get something to eat. Then set the remaining $7 aside for for savings and then if you get paid that next twelve dollars the next week you have fourteen dollars in savings and you spent five dollars on food <laughs> which is like a dollar a day for one thing of food every day which is really poor you don't want to go there I've been there but um okay let me try to come up with a number get paid um, here's what a paycheck usually looks like for me it's usually seven hundred and thirty dollars every two weeks bi-weekly and it's like um, that seven hundred and thirty divided by two would be 73 divided by 2, which is one and a half, and then 
35, like it'd be about 37.50 for, um, not 300, 300, 775, 375, I think. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, 375 per week, and then you take out, like, $100 for groceries. That's a pretty standard, I think. It's either, I'm trying to cut it down to 75 for myself. I'm using food stamps, so it's like 50 on food stamps, and then 25 in the social security cash. But, like... Usually you want to spend, <laughs> sorry, I'm doing more stuff with my hands. Usually you want to spend <laughs> like 75 or $100 on groceries a week. So you take 730 minus 200 for $100 a week for two weeks. That would be 200 So that would be um, $530 left over. So that's like taking out a need that would be paying yourself first and that's taking like yeah, there's so many numbers I don't do it very well in my head <laughs> I, need to, I need to write it down but like you take 50% of that towards needs such as groceries 30% of that towards wants and um 20% towards savings and paying yourself first could be first before you get your needs before you get your wants because those often go together when you're shopping you put that 20% um, aside into savings let's say you had a hundred you put twenty dollars into savings and then if you had a thousand, that would be two hundred into savings. I think, yeah, two hundred. But that would be three hundred out of a thousand goes towards wants. That would be five hundred goes towards needs. So, yeah. Let's see. What else did I write notes on? Hmm. Something about access restrictions. That sounds like a credit card. I'm not going to talk about what I've learned about credit cards quite yet because, um, that's fair. That's like a whole different subject. But yeah. There's different types of savings accounts. There's the traditional savings account. There's the high yield savings account. There's the money market account. And that's all I really wrote down. So you want to have an account fit for your needs you don't want them to convince you to get something that you don't need that like they charge you a lot of money per month to have because the accounts that I've had have been like uh, five dollars a month or seven dollars a month twelve dollars or fifteen dollars a month something like that it can get really costly over time so, um, the traditional savings account, let me see, I wrote it down, let me take it over here. It, this is the most common type of account, it comes without a fee or charge, having the account, for having the account, wow, I didn't type the T. <laughs> it usually has an opening cost to it. So, you have to have a certain amount of money put into the account 
to open it and ask to stay there for it to still be open without there's like a grace period where they give you a certain amount of time to put money back into it but it's usually like a couple days I think um so it might actually you might have to pay something to open it maybe you'd have to ask them you'd have to ask the bank okay so it costs a certain to get started to have uh, you have to have a certain amount to put into the account the money in the account cannot go below that money that is required to put into it okay a high yield savings account this is like the traditional savings account that that has a required amount of money to put into the account I wrote that completely wrong <laughs> okay this account has a higher interest rate however and is good to have to grow it's good to have to grow a business I put a comma there <laughs> okay there's a money market account this is an account that has a higher interest rate so that means you get like over a certain amount of time like a year they give you money to have your money in the bank because they use that money and they need that money there so they are saying like thank you for keeping your money in the bank your information here so that we can like um use it and so they they say thank you and they pay you back that's the interest but it's usually like a dollar for every hundred dollars but if it has a high interest rate it could be like two dollars for every hundred dollars a year which is not a lot <laughs> um so the money market account you can use checks from this account however there may be fees they said <laughs> yeah they were very vague about that they said there may be fees so it's all right okay then there's the certificate of deposit or the CD which is it usually requires someone to have like a thousand dollars saved up and then you use that you put that in there and um, so a CD is a type of savings account where I can keep my money there for a certain amount of time and a, in a couple of months to a couple of years in return the bank will give me a high higher interest rate than the other accounts I think and if I withdraw the money before the time is up I'll have to pay a penalty so if I take money out of a CD account before the time we agreed on then you pay them money to do that and it's like paying them is a penalty because you have to do it then there's like what is interest and how does it work so interest is a certain amount of money given to me by the bank to put into my bank account when I keep my money in the bank for a certain amount of time, they keep on giving money to me into my account. Usually it adds up to a dollar or three dollars at an interval of a year. So if I earn one percent interest when I have put a hundred dollars into the bank, I'll be given one dollar each year. If I have put more $100 bills into my account then I will have an extra dollar for every hundred dollars per year so if you have $500 they'll give you five dollars then the next year um, they'll add like a couple cents onto that five dollars that you put into there and then you have put more money in so they just keep it keeps growing
growing and you keep getting more money from putting money in and from it staying there, you know? So that's one reason to save money. Um, that's just the first document. I've got like six or seven of them. I think it's six. Yeah, it's six documents of notes. Anyway, um, I hope you learned something and thanks for listening. You have a great day. It's Laura. Yo girl, Laura. See ya. Da 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 da.